So whatever problem you have to solve in a hydrology, uh, at the end is a spatial problem. So uh, you have, you need to have a model that gives you data of things uh, in space. Many of you know uh, how to interpolate data, for instance, uh, meteorological data. For us, meteorological data are used but are not modeled at all. Maybe for some one of you, uh, this is not the case because he is a, a, a meteorologist or a physicist, and so he has also model for that. But for us, are just data. The traditional way we have those data is that we have in points, in some points inside the catchment, not on the whole space of the catchment. There are many solutions for getting the the work done of uh, interpolating things and uh, what I am presenting now is just one solution, which is the Krigi. It's a method of linear uh, estimation, of linear interpolation, but in space, of, of, of the data sets. Some one of you I know I, I very strong on this topic, but someone else, uh, uh, I, I think he doesn't know anything. So, it is necessary to <coughs> do a rehearsal of, of this topic. We have a measure that we are measuring a quantity, Z. So uh, our quantity uh, is unknown, and we have an estimate of it. And we call this hat Z sub zero. The one that you see here on the red, Okay, violet used to be a violet part of the of the screen. And the hypothesis that we simply do uh, when we use the imaging is that uh, this estimated <coughs> values is a linear interpolation of the measured value in n point z sub, sub i. The other uh, ingredient of the Reading is that uh, we define an error. An error between our estimate at z0 uh, with the real measure, which is simply z0. If we substitute the, uh, the expression of the, our estimate as a linear combination of the measurements, that's the error. The sum over all the measurements we have by lambda i, z, z i, and uh, z minus z zero. Obviously, uh, the lambda i's, uh, not obviously, lambda i's are parameters, the parameter of our, of our estimation that we have at the end to determine. The first requirement we do is that on the average, the error must be zero. So we take our our estimate of the uh, of the error, which is z z at z zero minus z zero, and the expected value of it, the average of it, should be zero on the left. And we simply here substitute the definition that we. Uh, that we gave, and this is known as simple aging. Then what we do is simply we uh, apply here the properties of the expected value. Uh, what is the expected value? The expected value means that we are we have several measurements in this case over time, and we do the average of the error over all this measurement over time. <coughs> uh, we, can, uh, we can show that uh, the, uh, expect, if we see the expected value as an operator, uh, we can um, see that it can compute with the sum. We can bring it inside the sum. So we have the sum of our, uh, our measurement of the expected value of, the e of our estimate minus the expected value of the function. No. 
nothing change here. Now what did, okay, nothing changed, no, not true. The expected values of our estimate as a discarded property that we can bring out from the expected value, the lambda, which is a nested number, a parameter. Uh, our, the, is the, uh, the expected value is a linear operator in which we just can, can bring, bring, it up, bring out any constant. Those are unknown, but are constant. So here we have, we have the sum of the expected values of the lambda is the expected values of, of our measurement minus the expected the, uh, value of the, the real values. But fortunately, the expected value of the measurement, if there are no systematic errors, is, a, is assumed to be n, which is the expected value of the, uh, of the process. So we have sum of lambda em minus m equal to 0. This implies that m lamb, sum over lambda e is equal to 1. Uh, because here we can pick out the m, we can collect the m, so we have m times <coughs> the summation of lambda e is minus 1 equal to 0. And that is the solution. Very simple mathematics, actually. This assumption says that our estimator uh, should be unbiased. We don't have, on the average, error over the mean. And uh, if we're being unbiased, the sum of the coefficients must be equal to 1. That's the first uh, finding of our assumptions. Increasing, we have a second. Actually, it's the third because the, the, the first one of the zero, the zero assumption is just that the, our estimate is really just the sum of the lambda is times the our measurements. Uh, the second request is that uh, our square error is the minimum. So, uh, what is the square error? Is the expected value of our estimate minus the real values x squared. Then we apply here the definition of the, and we just substitute, and we obtain this kind of things here. And we do some algebraic passages. We are, I am doing some algebra in this, in this way. Critting is usually seen as a very complicated matter, but in reality it's a very simple stuff. I use a trick here, actually, and I subtract and add the, the average, the mean, that I suppose to exist. This is a, a hidden uh, assumption on, on this argument that I am doing. And then what I do is uh, I just say, OK, now this is my first equation, and in place of the first mean, I, I make another trick. I put the sum over i of n of lambda i's because this is equal to 1. So this is actually 1 times m plus n minus zeta 0. Nothing changed. But this allows me to collect all the stuff in a in a uh, different manner, I just move the, my parenthesis from, from here to here. If you look, and I have this summation under the same place. Then I just do the, the square. I have the square on top of here. I just the square, I just do the square, so I have the, the square of this one and the square of this one. Nothing particularly is, uh, is the same type of algebra that we have uh, the high school, actually. 
so we have the, the square of the first term, the square of the second term, and the uh, cross product of the two multiplied by two with minus sign because it is negative. Now, what is the square of the first number? The, the, uh, when we do the square, we have to take the, this expression multiplied by the similar expression where we just change actually the index from i to, from e to j and uh, we do the solution. And now, and now we do the same that we did before. We move inside the, the expected <coughs> value. So we have the expected value of this product here, the expected value of this, this square, and the expected value of this other product here. I am go going quite fast on these passages, but you, you, I tell you that they are correct, and you can do at home on your scratchbook. <laughs> there is a lot of engineering, let's say, is the, not the, the, the demonstration in itself is simple, but there is a lot of definition and engineering in, 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 in the definition. It is sometimes a little difficult to, to, to remind, to, to remember, if, uh, especially if you are, if it is the first time that you see it. Now what I do, I observe that the expectation value of this difference here is just the covariance, the two-point covariance, called in statistics, of z and zj subtracted to the mean. So simply, I rewrite re the previous formula in terms of covariances and observe that this, the first block of the expected values is the covariance of Z and ZJ, and the second block is the covariance of Z0 and uh, Z0, and the third block is the covariance of, of Z0 and, Z, and Z1. I remind you that uh, uh, Z sub, sub I is, the, uh, is the, the place where I have, is the measure in the place where I have measured, and Z sub 0 is our, our fi final unknown. The quantity that we want to estimate. There is actually a further definition in the region. So I have to find the covariance, the covariances, two point covariances. But uh, uh, all the, the machinery is better, uh, is be usually put in, in terms of a quantity that is called variogram. Which is the variogram is the difference between the covariance, the auto covariance of Z with Z, which is actually the variance of the system of the Z, Z and the minus the covariance. So finally, I write the final formula of my expected value as the double summation lambda E lambda J for the variogram of this term plus two times the, uh, the lambda e for the covariance between the, uh, the measure that I, I want to know and the measure in the points where we, uh, we have measurements. So how do you change covariance to uh, diagram? Why? Well, uh, uh, actually, um, OK, there is a reason <coughs> because I, uh, I, I I change the variogram. Uh, the reason is that uh, uh, sometimes, if I, if I use covariances, sometimes covariances are uh, simply do, uh, do not exist. There are processes in nature for which the variance tends to be infinite. Like um, in uh, random movement, for instance, uh, can have uh, co uh, covariance in infinite. Instead, uh, at, the, uh, at the origin, in the point zero, close, 
uh, instead the variance is uh, uh, the variogram is always zero in the zero point. We will see um, a little of variography then in the next presentation. So, and obviously the, the, the variogram is zero at the, uh, at the origin, but if the covariance is infinite, is uh, infinite, goes to infinity when at large distance. I will provide you uh, later a, a, some figures, and so you can uh, you can decide. But from the fi figures, what happens? Now we are interested just in some algebra. I want that the error is minimum. So if I want that the error is minimum, I have to derive the error. The square, uh, sorry, not the error, the square error. <coughs> I have to derive the square error with respect to the lambdas, because the lambdas are my unknown in this specific problem. Yeah, I am. So I just bring in the, the, the derivation, and you see here I obtain the lambda j versus. Uh, the derivation of lambda j with respect to the uh, lambda k, and that is a, a direct delta, is a 1 if e is equal to k as 0 otherwise, obviously. And the same here. But here is also multiplied by lambda k. So the final expression. We don't go into the detail, but all the, the, the passages are there, so you can do later on. And all the, uh, all the final expression is the last line that we have here, expressing covariances. In express, sorry, in, vario, in term of the variogram. Actually, here I did a further hypothesis that uh, was not present before. I am just cheating a little bit here. You see, when I, at a certain moment here, coming from here to here, I did a further hypothesis. You see that, you see this thing here, that was not present before. Before it was just a variogram between one point and the other point, two point variogram. Here actually I, may, I am making an, an assumption that I, I, I didn't display in the slide, but I will correct it which is that uh, the variogram actually doesn't depend on the, on the two points, but just from the distance of the point. This made quite easier because it means that the variogram of the covariance, which is actually the same between me and you, is uh, exactly the same distance function that from me and her, because our distance are the same and vice versa, So, I am reducing, I am doing a strong hypothesis, actually, because in reality, this is not always true. But let's do it for simplification. So, I did also, this hypothesis is that, uh, and uh, <coughs> it, it implies also that the process is homogeneous in space. We don't have any difference. In, uh, with the, the, the thing is, depends just on the distance between the point and doesn't depend on the position of the single point. Not even on the direction of the point. But <coughs> who has to do with meteorological data? For, for instance, know that sometimes there are strong anisotropies in the directions. So in this case, this assumption is not correct. And we have to work in a different way. I did this for simplifying also my life in the, in the next in the next presentation. Otherwise, we have to do some more general things. So this is the final expression. Uh, what is the final expression? Actually, it's a system of linear equation where the unknown are the lambda is in. The other two terms actually are supposed to be known. Not really true. Not really true, and I will, will tell you in a while. 
So the last expression, the, the, la the last line here can be set in more formal way in the things like this one. Big gamma for big lambda equal to B. Well, gamma, big gamma is the, uh, um, now we see in the next slides, uh, is a matrix of the lambda E's. Uh, uh, the big gamma is a, mat uh, is a matrix of the gamma, sorry. The variable. This is a matrix of the variable. This is a, a, a vector of the lambda. Here is, and this is, uh, and this is usually uh, no, known in if you we were treating linear equation as the known term. So this is the gamma. You see here the single gamma. Here I put again between the, the points. Actually, it depends just on the distance, so it's not so complicated. Here, there is the lambda, lambda 1, lambda n, and there is a, it appears also a 1 because there is a constraint on the solution of my system that the sum of all lambdas is equal to 1. While b is the variogram between the place where I want to, to have the, the estimate and the other point. So I say that if it is a linear, a, a linear system, B is usually known as a known term. But if we look here at the B, B is a, a vector or variogram between the measure in point that we have and the measure in the point where we don't have the measure. So what the hell are you doing? The known part of the in our linear system is uh, physically not known because we have to decide how to estimate this thing here. So what is going on here? Are we in troubles? Uh, is in this position that uh, <coughs> The, uh, the assumption that I made before in writing my comes in. I do the assumption that the process is a stochastic process, homogeneous in space and isotropic. So the variograms depends just on the distances between points. And even if I don't know the measure in the point Z0, I know the distance from of the point C0 from the other point. And I make the assumption that the variogram is exactly the same of all the other points. So as far as I know the structure of the variogram, I am able to solve the other, the other system. Because I say, OK, I am in C0. My distance from you is uh, one kilometer. And uh, the, the variogram, I know the form of the variogram, and uh, we'll be on this topic in a, in a few seconds. And uh, then, uh, if my distance is one kilometer, the variogram between me and you is the same that from me and him, and I, where uh, the, the, both of us, in, in the both our places, there are measurements. So you are the place where you there is the unknown. Uh, I am a place where uh, uh, I have measurement. He, have, he is in the place where there is another measurement. The structure of the variogram between me and him is the same that between me and you. So I can solve this problem to have the B term defined. So Usually, the variogram is written like this. Excuse me. Instead of. In previous slide, you turn back again to z, z x. It means elevation or again distance. No, it's not elevation. Z is not elevation. Z is it just it's a wrong choice actually for the for the unknown problem. Could be 
is a the unknown variable. It's not z the coordinates. Should I, should I call it uh, something else? But actually, in the literature, usually they call z, so I can't see. So usually the variogram is written in this way, not in the way that uh, I gave you. Between uh, accounting for the difference between of, of the distance between the point R, I and J, and this is the <coughs> formula of the variogram. When, this is the formula of the variogram, when it comes from measure points. So let's say this is a definition of what we, we call later experimental variogram. We have points where we have measurement. We go to evaluate the variogram in this by applying this formula here. When we have the variogram, uh, we have to do some uh, other magic, and then apply this magic to the to our system. Someone is looking to me with the magic is that we have to ch choose the variogram. Okay, this is the empirical variogram. <coughs> the empirical variogram is a set of points separated by a certain distance. It's a value on an x, y, x uh, plot is a set of points where on the, on the uh, y I, we have the variogram and the x we have the distance. And the set of points is not taking a function we have to interpolate the function to this, this set of point, and the interpolation means that uh, we have to decide which function we have to interpolate. So that's the magic that we have, we have to do. Uh, so our procedure is get the data from the gauges, build the empirical semi-variogram, which is the formula in the previous slide. We have to fit a theoretical semi-variogram to the empirical semi-variogram. And, uh, uh, and we will see in a while what is a, a theoretical uh, uh, model of the semi-variogram. Once we have done, we, once we have the, cho the choice of the, our theoretical semi-variogram, we can put all this stuff in our linear system of equation, the gamma lambda equal to b, and using a linear systems a solver for linear systems to get the lambdas. And then from the lambdas we have the, uh, the, we have our estimation. In this way we can produce a surface of point, giving n, n point we can give a surface. Uh, appar apparently the uh, the, uh, the creaking has also a, a, an advantage, which is, is also giving us a way to estimate the errors. But actually, the error that we use here is not, uh, in practice, is not the, the, the real error we do when we, when we, uh, we apply the bridging. So we are also applying another method to estimate the real error when we, we apply it. So this, for instance, is temperature. And this is a, a case, a, a sequence of temperature. And, uh, and uh, the result of uh, our estimation of temperature, this is the estimation of temperature in a point. The, the use of creaking, obviously, you cannot do with just one point. Is, is, yeah, we need to have many points. We can estimate another temperature in any other point here, very low in this case, 2 degrees, 2 centigrades, 5 centigrades is here in the mountain, is in winter, and you see here temperature in different seasons, maybe you can recognize here the Arja Valley or so, here actually there is, yeah, but that's what you spent so far is ordinary cream, isn't it? Yeah, that's his, uh, uh, this, this is a this is because yeah, well, uh, this is a little bit more procedure here. Okay. 
is, is not just simple fusing. But uh, this is a just to show you the, what the final results can be. And here we take, took away the elevation because the temperature is not to vary, vary, uh, to vary with the elevation uh, according to a certain specific law, which is the adiabatic or non-adiabatic law of uh, uh, law of diffusing temperature. So that's all for this guy. We, uh, uh, what I did was to um, do my hypothesis on my data showing how we uh, used the, the linear interpolation and uh, trying to highlight it to you which, is the, which are the critical points, the critical assumptions. And especially is that uh, the diagram is isotropic and homogeneous in space, depending just on the distance between the point. This allow, allows us to complete the linear equation that is the resulting of the two, two other hypotheses that the system is unbiased and the error produces the mean. 